stage three, um, we actually don't give them a huge amount of homework. Um, it might be controversial, but uh, we have a, a school policy of how much each subject sets kind of per week, and it's not a massive amount. We would use it more for extending a little bit of learning we've been doing in a lesson or consolidating something, not for sort of huge extended written tasks because we just think they need the support in class and that it's actually not that valuable. In key stage four, obviously, that's when it ramps up a lot. So the best way to use homework is um, by certainly ensuring that students who are in Key Stage 4 are um, actively seeking their own ideas. So I tend to use it as re for research rather than uh, writing essays and things like that. It's much better to get them to go out and get their own research sorted all out so they create mind maps of you know, um, uh, Jacobean context for Macbeth those sorts of things and that enables them to actually go and do the research themselves. So we do quite a lot of flipped learning where actually the homework will be to do the research, do the revision, do the essay and then they need it for the lesson in terms of um, that is what we're going to work on in the lesson and sometimes that might mean that actually it isn't marked in the traditional sense. They might use it in the class and then we'll peer assess it, they'll self assess it um, a teacher might give verbal feedback in that lesson. Okay, you, you all did this essay and now we're going to look at how well you did, look at the criteria, spend the lesson, kind of doing the marking and, and figuring out where they can improve that essay. And then obviously the most important bit is to then do the improvements. You can't sort of leave it there. It's, you have to be a little bit flexible and a little bit brave sometimes. <laughs> Because the uh, GCSE has got these really long, heavy mark questions now, we do uh, a process of learning it gradually throughout the two years. So uh, this class, right at the beginning of year 10, we're introduced to the imaginative writing, for example. Uh, they did a first draft, which is really heavily marked by me, um, with lots of comments. Um, some of them phrased as questions, so that actually they can respond to the questions and think about how could I improve on that. We often use triple impact marking. Whenever we got homework, we made sure in class we went through it. We got really detailed feedback on probably each of the paragraphs that we'd written. Say, for example, if it was a, uh, we were given a text to read at home and then evaluate, we, the teacher would literally read through every single paragraph, make sure she gives us really good feedback, and then it was our job to go home and redo it and then they would read it again to make sure we've learned from our previous mistakes. Progress is tracked differently in Key Stage 3, 4 and 5, um, necessarily, because of the different things, different skill areas. Um, but what we did a, a few years ago was actually looked at the assessment objectives for the GCSEs and the A-levels and looked at the similarities and said, what are the skills that actually they're being tested on in the GCSE and in the A-level? that they need to know and narrowed it down to six key skill areas and then we checked that all the way back to year seven and rewrote everything from the start so although obviously a lot of the contents the same same texts same um, lessons perhaps the way that we deliver the skills is different the way that we kind of aim everything is slightly different all the way from day one of year seven it's all geared towards the aos that are in the gcse exams and then the a-level exams